in the past, I was thinking that the higher the ketones, the better. And I could achieve that with the ketone esters that we're using in the lab. But now I have a concern actually that if your ketone levels get too high, we've seen animals actually die from ketosis with ketone esters. So I don't talk about that much because, you know, we want to put ketone esters in a good light. But we, you know, we have seen that if you administer ketones with a gavage or IV high enough, you can produce ketoacidosis and that could be toxic. So the potential for uh, getting into ketoacidosis with a ketone salt or MCT is not going to happen because it's like, it's, uh, it's self-limiting. You'll have GI distress before you get into high, high levels of ketosis. So just getting ketones elevated an extra one to two millimolar can provide a level of 10 to 20% available energy to the brain. So we know this, that if you elevate one millimolar would be equivalent to like a, a boost in brain energy, available brain energy of 10%. So, uh, and then you don't really see, you know, physiological changes in blood pH. So we measure things like blood pH and liver function, things like over time. Whenever we get ketones into that one to two millimolar range with exogenous ketones, we never see anything negative happen. But if we give a very powerful ketone ester, that may be important for things like glucose transporter or status epilepticus or cancer or other things. But I personally experimented with high levels and felt sick. So when I get my levels to like three, four, five, but if I keep my levels at one to two, I can feel an energy boost and I don't have any negative effects. So uh, for the average person listening to this, I don't, I think ketone esters, a low dose could be okay, but they taste horrible and they're expensive. So the ketone salts are probably a better option for like daily use. There are counter regulatory mechanisms when you consume exogenous ketones that happen. And one is that, you know, if you consume exogenous ketones and you get your levels above two millimolar, you can measure an increase in insulin. So that's actually how we regulate physiologically our state of ketosis. We go on a ketogenic diet, we burn a high level of fat in the liver, and then we produce ketones. The ketones get into the blood, you get ketone induced increase in insulin. And an elevation of insulin will then feed back to the liver and reduce fatty acid oxidation in the liver. So if you consume a lot of ket exogenous ketones, that will shut down your own ketone production, but you have to consume enough that gets your level, at least from a, the biological assay we use, that, that gets your level above a delta of two millimolar, which is easily to achieve with a ketone ester, but with a ketone salt, that's kind of like the limits about how you can go. So ketone salts generally don't increase insulin, which is probably good if you're trying to burn fat. If you want to bring the science of food as medicine into your kitchen, check out my new course on diet and gene expression at dotoraronica.com or using the link below this video. I hope to see you there.